In today's world of cybersecurity, many of the things we talk about may seem abstract. However, as IoT devices creep their way into every corner of our lives, many of the threats they present can become very personal. And sometimes they can even be a matter of life or death. Let's talk about how that can happen. This is a pacemaker, but it's not just any pacemaker. It's a connected IoT device. This pacemaker is implanted surgically into a patient. And once it's in the patient, it connects with a handful of different devices in the ecosystem. One of the devices this pacemaker connects to is a bedside monitor. This bedside monitor collects important information about the pacing activity of a patient. It also collects information on how the device is operating. It then sends that information over a private network to hospitals and clinics where their doctors reside. And those doctors use that information to make treatment decisions for the patient. A cyber flaw in any of the devices, whether it be the network, the bedside monitor, or the pacemaker, can result in catastrophic events for a patient. In 2016, a security research firm called Muddy Waters discovered two critical vulnerabilities. The first one was a lack of encryption. Muddy Waters discovered that St. Jude was not encrypting software or security credentials that were being exchanged between devices. The second vulnerability they discovered was a lack of authentication. The devices that communicated in this ecosystem did not require authentication approaches to make sure that anything connecting into them was trusted. These vulnerabilities allowed the attackers to pull off two very critical and harmful attacks on this ecosystem. The first thing Muddy Waters did was they gained access to the bedside monitor. Once inside, they were able to load software on this device that caused it to send repeated messages during the night to the pacemaker that's embedded within the patient. Those repeated messages caused the battery of the device to deplete. This attack was known as a battery draw. The second attack that they performed was known as a crash attack. And in this instance, the attackers were able to broadcast repeated messages directly to the cardiac device. Those messages caused the device to malfunction and in some cases, caused the device to pace at very unsafe levels. Once Muddy Waters had executed and determined they could do these attacks, they then did something even crazier. They bought a short position in St. Jude Medical's stock having confidence that once these vulnerabilities were released to the public, the stock would drop. St. Jude Medical was approximately a $26 billion company, and when these vulnerabilities were released, the stock dropped approximately 15%. These attacks could have been prevented with the right security protections in place. When designing this device ecosystem, if St. Jude had put in place encryption of the data that flowed between the device monitor and the pacemaker, the security credentials that the attackers were able to get, the user ID and pacemaker and the private keys would have been protected. If St. Jude Medical had put in place strong authentication and required certificates before devices communicated with each other, the attackers would have been stopped and would not have been able to gain access to the network, to the bedside monitor, or to the pacemaker. With encryption and strong authentication in place, the manufacturer and more importantly, the patient can rest easy knowing that these devices are secure. The industry has learned a lot from this attack. A lot of improvements have been made and we're working with a lot of the manufacturers to make sure these basic protections are in place. With strong authentication and encryption in place, the attackers are stopped at the front door.